Okay, we're back live here at the Cassandra Summit 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with Jeff Kelly from Wikibon.org, the lead analyst uh, for big data on our team, and uh, we're joined with Jason Brown, software engineer at Netflix. Howdy. Jason, Howdy. welcome to theCUBE. Well, thank you for having me. So we had uh, Adrian on earlier yep. from, uh, from Netflix, uh, I call him CTO, but he was, oh, no, no, I'm <laughs> director of architect. Um, I, and he says, uh, Netflix doesn't have a CTO. That's true. And he says also they only hire adults, okay, <laughs> no children. So good to know that uh, you're not breaking any labor laws uh, in software development uh, language. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't help but resist. But uh, welcome. Sure. So you're at Netflix. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, tell us about your experience. Sure. Uh, obviously, because they only hire very senior executives <laughs> and developers. So tell us about your background. Sure. So uh, I've been at Netflix for uh, four years. Before that, I was an architect and a, a, a lead engineer over at MajorLeagueBaseball.com in uh, New York City. Which one? MLB? Yeah, yeah Major League Baseball. Um, and I uh, uh, basically re-implemented their entire uh, e-commerce system. Uh, before that, I was uh, working over in the uh, wireless uh, space doing uh, mobile applications way before it was uh, sexy or interesting. Uh, it was a little boring back then. but. Uh, then uh, uh, before that, just kind of wandering around and uh, trying to build my uh, career up and, uh, and uh, eventually land out here in California. All right, so you're a software degree. What languages do you know? <laughs> so the one I've been primarily working in for the last 10 years is Java. Um, uh, I, I do a little bit of Python, scripting, and a little bit of other things, but it's primarily Java. You know, it's, it's one that pays the mortgage. It's one that lets me... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a good meat and potatoes, you know. Exactly. Good meat and potatoes. Java takes care of all the memory management. You don't deal with yeah. that. Um, but you can go see if you want, right? No problem. Absolutely, yeah. In yeah. fact, uh, uh, back when I was doing uh, mobile development, uh, uh, half the work was in C, and actually that was uh, probably one of the best uh, on-the-job experiences I've ever had, because I you know, constantly uh, got, uh, got uh, my, uh, my, my stuff handed back to me uh, uh, when, the, uh, uh, when the phones crashed and the devices did very naughty well, things. Well, we had to grill you on your expertise because we couldn't help but resist Adrian's comment about <laughs> uh, we only hire people with five to 10 years experience and uh, <laughs> good good culture. We asked them about the culture at Netflix, so uh, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, we're big fans of Netflix, uh, see okay. uh, Reed and uh, his yeah. history and entrepreneurship. Mm. It's yeah, just yeah. been a story history. Mm. Uh, um, he used to work for a uh, previous investor of mine, Audrey McLean. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my last company, she invested at Stanford. Hmm. But I got to follow his career. I don't know him personally, but yeah. just great, great brand. So love yeah. the disruption. So you guys yeah. are all, all cloud, right? So yes. take us through, um, What's it like right now, architecturally? Let's get into the into the into the operating environment. Sure. Uh, so you're running, you're programming in Java. Mm -hmm. You have Amazon. You explained a little bit about it. Yeah. Um, you're running Cassandra. Mm -hmm. What's the day-to-day -day life like for the in that environment? Sure. So uh, the the day-to-day uh, -day life for a uh, just a typical engineer is uh, you're working on uh, a, a coder features for like say the uh, the recommendations algorithm, and so uh, and that's the algorithm that that will show customers. Uh, uh, movies that they may be interested in uh, uh, based upon you know, everything they've watched and rated in the past. And uh, so uh, that would uh, get uh, 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 calculated and then uh, driven to the, uh, the, the website. And um, uh, so that when the, uh, the, the engineer is actually working, you write some code, you check it in, you uh, basically create something that will uh, uh, run inside of, um, inside of EC2 and uh, you uh, can uh, launch it pretty fast, and uh, essentially you could go from uh, 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 writing a piece of code right now and uh, pushing it in prod in just a few hours. And really that, that, that few hours is really just taken by building uh, uh, the appropriate uh, 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 artifacts and then really just testing. So, so people are familiar with the recommendation service. Obviously they have sure. Netflix, they say, hey, I ran this movie, you might like this. Absolutely. Uh, on Google, I got the little transformer app yeah. here as part of my thing. Yep. Uh, suggestions you might want to try, oh, there's no list, uh, this shit. It would pop up other yeah. movies that I like. Yeah. Act of Valor, yep. you know, guy. Oh, you want like this. Absolutely. So take us through some of the um, th uh, coding behind that. Sure. Actually, collective intelligence is one, mm -hmm. using a lot of data. Mm -hmm. so yeah, and, uh, and uh, grouping uh, uh, different customers by, uh, by their similar likes. So if you and I have similar likes, uh, we, have, we may be bucketed together. Um, and I really can't talk too much about the internals because I'm not very familiar with it myself, but also you know, some of it is you know, internal. Uh, Secret sauce. It's a, it's a secret sauce of Netflix that we hope uh, makes it a uh, better uh, okay, Let me uh, try to unpack and customers. share that for the crowd. What they do, essentially do is some community detection, they store all the data, no, I'm only kidding. Um, <laughs> no, seriously, so you got to get the data. So let's just, yeah. I want to kind of go through kind of the big picture, just because, sure. and I want to oversimplify, I don't have to go into the secret sauce, yeah. but you need access to the data. So from yeah. a database standpoint, mm -hmm. you have the Netflix's data model, yeah. all the data for all the clients, mm -hmm. right, all the customers. Yeah, all the customers. So you mm -hmm. have all that data, yep. and you got to pull that in at any given time. Correct. Right? So to know my likes, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. You gotta have access to my stuff all the time. Exactly. And so how do you guys do that? What do you, how does it work? Sure, so um, whenever you uh, watch something or rate the movie, it'll get uh, submitted to a, a, a system, uh, a, a database. Then that'll get run through a one uh, a, a set of uh, aggregation that'll figure out you know, everything you've watched and all the movies that you'd be interested in <coughs> and, put, and, and generates one set of lists. Then at, at uh, runtime, when you actually go to Netflix.com or, or uh, you go through a device like a PS3 or anything else, uh, we'll let you do uh, uh, on-the-fly filtering. So we, uh, so there's things like top 10 videos that you may be interested in, or there's things that, like the, uh, 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 the the foreign films you'd be interested in, or the the critically acclaimed heartbreakers that you'd be interested in. You know, based upon everything that you've watched, and uh, and really filtered for uh, 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 for hopefully what you are interested in. So talk about the Cassandra. I, I, like we could rattle on this for a long way. Sure. So I know you probably won't get more specific because of the secret sauce. Um, so we'll kind of redirect into the Cassandra. Sure. So mm-hmm. why Cassandra um, in the cloud and specifically how does it help you guys? Absolutely. So uh, one of the, the, the coolest features about uh, Cassandra is that it has this uh, uh, a multi-data center uh, uh, sense built into it, meaning you can run the same, uh, 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 they can house the same set of data across multiple data centers and they can be geographically disparate locations. So for us that means essentially we can have a customer's complete set of data in Europe and a complete set in Singapore and a complete set in the US. And for us that's really great because um, as we want to grow internationally, um, having the uh, customer's data available everywhere and cl- very close to them is very critical for, uh, for our business and to uh, uh, get like, recommendations and the customer's data as fast as possible so we can serve up uh, what they'd be interested in. So for in. replication, essentially, yeah. replicating the infrastructure. Absolutely. So what, what's involved? I mean, does Cassandra take care of all that? Is it there... does, pretty much under the hood. Um, so uh, we've had uh, some Cassandra committers on board at uh, Netflix who've written a lot of uh, uh, code and have contributed back to the open source project. and. Um, and that's essentially what we run in our production uh, environment so that we can run inside of Amazon too and have customers data in Europe, in the US, and uh, anywhere else that uh, Netflix decides to uh, uh, go to. So there's a word that's being kicked around since the whole social data stream, Mm -hmm. streaming. Mm -hmm. Not not streaming movies like you guys, but streaming data. Yeah. So data that's Mm -hmm. fast moving. Yeah. Um, Is Cassandra a better use case than HBase or Mm -hmm. what's the, I mean, takes us through the Mongo, (laughs) HBase, Cassandra, um, based on your expert opinion, <laughs> looking at the different views, uh, so we know why you like Cassandra. But you know, yeah. HBase has some advantages. Yeah, you've um, got SimpleDB, mm-hmm. which uh, we actually started off uh, our cloud migration using SimpleDB. Um, unfortunately, we found that it didn't scale up to what we needed. Uh, there were major performance problems, and um, we just had to uh, uh, basically uh, uh, migrate or abandon past it because it was just not uh, scaling up to our needs. And so at that point, we really need to find out a database for our, our, you know, that, that we had to manage. And um, so we did a, a comparison way back in the day, about two years ago now. We evaluated things like Mongo, Cassandra, React, um, HBase, and, uh, and Cassandra uh, uh, won out for us because of the, uh, the data center uh, uh, compatibility. Uh, we found that HBase didn't work for us because it, it seemed more geared towards large, um, large chunks of data rather than our, uh, our needs at runtime, which is for a specific customer set of data, which is a much smaller sort of a, a unit of granularity. So HBase is great for uh, doing the, uh, the, the ana- a, a lot of analytical work, but didn't work for our uh, runtime needs. Um, <coughs> uh, MongoDB, we played with a little bit. There was a team that actually deployed it internally, but it, it had a lot of uh, performance scalability problems. Um, there was a, there's a, a write uh, a lock that every time you do a write inside of it, 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 it uh, tries to do a lock, and I don't know much of the details myself, but um, essentially they were able to make it fall over, unfortunately, pretty fast. So for their specific purpose, it didn't work. Yeah. Um, and um, as we're trying to not have a whole slew of, uh, of database systems running around, um, we decided to, uh, to uh, center on Cassandra. Gotcha. Good. Uh, so yeah, I'm interested to hear a little bit about how uh, the two, these two worlds, big data analytics, kind of big data transactional real time processing, yeah. how they live together in mm-hmm. Netflix. Because uh, we actually had a, a data scientist on from Netflix at yeah. uh, HortonWorks uh, Hadoop Summit. Yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, the algorithms and uh, building mm-hmm. the, the kind of the, the analytics that, that power the uh, suggestions. Yeah. But you've also got to, once you make the suggestions, you've mm-hmm. also got to deliver the content. Correct. So mm-hmm. you've kind of got both both worlds there. Exactly. Uh, how how do you how do you approach that at Netflix? in terms of mm-hmm. making those two work together and mm-hmm. both from a technology perspective and from a team team staffing mm-hmm. perspective? Is there overlap? How does that work? Sure, so it's unfortunately not one big system that can rule them all. <laughs> it's, it's unfortunately a group of systems. Um, in fact, when we first moved to the cloud and moved to Cassandra, <coughs> the problem that we found that we had was, um, you know, it wasn't one system and then moving all the data out of one 
uh, moving all the data out of Cassandra into something else where it could be uh, 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 analyzed and, and, and really churned through was actually quite a chore that our, our, our analytics team spent, I think, the better part of seven to eight months trying to, wow. to uh, work through that process. And so that's the process of getting it out, then getting it in. Um, a lot of how that team uh, works is that they'll up, upload uh, the, uh, the, 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 the crunched out numbers, they'll just uh, uh, stash it up in S3, mm -hmm. and then it'll be pulled in by another team to be stuffed into either another Cassandra cluster, or into a, uh, or just those uh, runtime services will pull it from S3. Mm -hmm. okay. So unfortunately, it's, it's, it's not as simple as we would all like, but it, it, it all works. Well, right, but uh, I think that, you know, it's important to, to, to point out, people sometimes are trying to kind of compare and contrast the different uh, big data approaches, and yeah. they're often complementary in many ways. I mean, yeah. the, you know, the, what, what Cassandra does certainly is complementary mm -hmm. in a lot of absolutely. ways to what Hadoop does in mm -hmm. terms of the analytics. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's a little bit different when you get into HBase, then you're talking a little bit about kind of a competitive situation. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, so in terms of uh, Cassandra, we've heard a little bit about, you know, over the last couple of years, the uh, kind of the tool set has, mm -hmm. has improved. A couple yeah. of years ago it was not, not, not great. So yes, could know. you talk about that? Could you, first of all, could you confirm that? Is that, is that accurate? Uh, it's and, it's uh, largely accurate. And how has it developed? How has it improved over the last couple of years? And, and how <coughs> easy is it to use now? Sure, so for an enterprising company like Netflix where you're going to go in and, and you know you're you know, pioneers and you're basically you know, going to have bloody fingers at the end of this, <laughs> um, you're ready to, to, to sit down and write some code. Mm -hmm. um, for most other companies, unfortunately, that's a big undertaking and right. it's, it's kind of scary. Um, uh, we've done a lot of things, there's still a lot of room for improvement. So uh, uh, we've written a lot of open source, uh, uh, we've, we've written a lot of tools that we've open sourced, but unfortunately there's still you know, a lot of stuff that, that the, the, the typical enterprise off the street just, you know, it, it, it's a high barrier to entry. No, I think I think that I think things have improved a lot over even just the last couple of years. And if you think about things like Oracle and even MySQL, mm -hmm. and they've been around for decades. And so there've been time for these, you know, not only the technologies to settle in, but then to a tools community to, to a form mm -hmm. around them, which maybe in a few years we'll start to see with a lot of the NoSQL solutions. But at least right now, it's still a lot of, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, just arrows mm -hmm. and uh, and you know. We have one minute tools. left, so I want to ask one final question. Obviously, we had a good chuckle with uh, Adrian. We just pumped it up on the blog, so there's a blog post out there now. Mm -hmm. Go to siliconangle.com. You can get a blog, see the blog post, and uh, write up from Kit Dodson, one of our editors, as well as the video footage uh, from Adrian's video. But mm -hmm. given Netflix's position in the marketplace, mm -hmm. both as an innovator and a disruptor, as well as putting stuff in production, yeah. um, what would you share with some of the younger generation CS dudes coming out of college and or you know, working their way through the trenches, learning mm -hmm. and playing in the open source community around you're just trying to get some navigation mm -hmm. around what language is, mm -hmm. you know, philosophies. Could you just share your personal and collective Netflix mojo with the, with the crowd in terms of just mm -hmm. how to approach the different you know, languages, framework, mm -hmm. up and down the stack? Sure, so I'll actually share uh, my own personal story. Um, uh, my background is actually not in computer science. I have a master's degree in music composition. So uh, uh, coming out of grad school in 1999, I needed to get a job. <laughs> so uh, I, I basically just started at the bottom uh, doing tech support uh, phone calls and basically it was really just staying up late nights, studying as much as I can. Uh, luckily I was at a company where the uh, systems engineer who was the founder of the company just kind of took me underneath his wing, gave me a software apprenticeship and really it was just you know, a lot of hard work at the end of the day and, uh, and reading as much as I can. And, you know, and back then uh, uh, open source wasn't as big as it is now. Um, but, but uh, definitely reading all the, all, you know, any code you can get your hands on in, in, in all the different languages is great. But of course, I think reading C is probably the, the best skill to have of all because that's really closest to the metal. And uh, of course, you can do the most damage to the metal, but uh, <laughs> and, and, and perhaps to your own self. But uh, uh, that's really where it's at. Um, okay. It all boils down. All right, Jason Brown, software engineer at Netflix. We've had a great Netflix contingent here on the Cube. Obviously, proponents of Cassandra. Obviously, very cloud cloud-centric in their architecture. Uh, they do have stuff on-prem, just to kind of clarify that. It's not just all 100% cloud, um, but it's heavily with Amazon, one yeah. vendor, mm -hmm. uh, and are deploying it and saving a lot of money. We heard to talk about Europe, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. Jason, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest at this short break. Thanks for having me.